Now, then we have this quotient rule. And uh, now my professor, my professor taught me this quotient rule with a song. So uh, before I tell you the song, I would like to show you the lyrics or the key terms in the lyrics. You are, I'm gonna use L to represent the word low, which actually represents the uh, denominator. You will see me using the word, I'm uh, oh, sorry, DL, that stands for D low, and that would be the derivative of the denominator. Okay. Did your teacher talk about the song? Okay. And then we have H that stands for high, and high would represent the numerator. And you would hear me saying, uh, uh, seeing D high, which is the derivative of the numerator. All right? So the song goes like this. All right? The song goes like this. Or high over low. All right? So the song goes like this. Low D high minus high D low over low low. Okay, that's what my professor taught me. I'm not sure how popular this song is. Yeah, so, uh, but it's like, this is just something that you have to memorize. Now, um, am I a fan of this? No. Is there a way to uh, circumvent this uh, quotient rule? Yes but you're gonna learn it later, not now, okay? And a little spoiler, a little spoiler. The way to circumvent this has to do with natural log, all right? It's a good thing, okay? And, and I would say, and I will confess that before calculus, log is such a monster, you have all these properties, and when you go to calculus, you will have the moment to truly appreciate this property of uh, natural log, but we'll save that for later. So what it means is that you have g of x, the denominator times f prime of x, d high, minus high, and then d low over low, low. And let me color code all the derivatives. So you can see it slightly better. Okay. Low D high minus high D low over low low. Low D high minus high D low over low low. Now this is subtraction. So you cannot mess up the order. You have to find out the G, uh, find out, uh, you have to go with this particular order. Low D high minus high D low over low low. Number nine, uh, quotient rule. So again, the song is, Low D high minus high D low over low low. Okay. Low D high minus high D low over low low. So H prime of X. Well, as I said before, uh, low low means the denominator is being multiplied by itself. So that will be always my first order of business. Get that, get that taken care of. Even though low low is at the very last part of the song, but that's easy. Low D high minus high D low over low low. So the two parts of the fraction, right? So low, oh, by the way, uh, let me just go ahead and use a little pencil to write this here. That uh, this, make sure that you're also looking at this as X to the one half power, okay? Low, D high, which is minus I D low. All right, all right, all right. Now, the instruction sets what? You cannot have a complex fraction 
Do we have a complex fraction right here? Well, yes, because uh, in the numerator, you've got a two in the fraction. This is about to be a square root X in the little fraction in the denominator. So how can we resolve this case of complex fraction? Now, let me just go ahead, clean things up a little bit for you to see what's happening here. But uh, another thing that I will tell you in a moment, and that is um, how you can go straight to the next step without doing this cleanup process. So if you clean things up, the derivative will become two square root x in the denominator, okay? The x cubed plus one in the numerator. And then uh, on the other part, the other second term in the numerator is just uh, three x squared times square root of x. Now, you may question, or you may, you may say, hey, Mr. Chan, uh, why don't you um, add the exponents together and make it, um, what? Uh, five halves, right? You could do that, but I'm going to tell you that. Just hold it for the moment. How can we get rid of the denominator right here? Because we do not want to have a complex fraction. You multiply by the denominator for both numerator and denominator. But just to make sure that you do not overlook that this minus, meaning what? Meaning that you are supposed to distribute into these two separate terms in the numerator, okay? Now for the denominator, there's not much to really discuss. And again, uh, in calculus, we don't really need you to rationalize anything. Just keep the square root x in the denominator, we are happy. So if you multiply the two root x into the numerator, uh, well, the first term, that is something to uh, feel very happy about because, hey, we just got rid of the uh, denominator. What about the second term? Well, three times two is six. X squared. And what about square root X times square root X? So that's the reason why I did not combine the square root x with the x squared, because I could foresee that there's a root x times root x, and this would make my life a whole lot easier. Uh, and uh, and if you want to combine them, that becomes x cubed. So so ultimately, what you have for your function, I um, mean for your derivative, is that uh, you have x cubed minus six x cubed. So 5x cubed, so 1 minus 5x cubed, over 2 square root of x, x cubed plus 1 over 2. Can you not what? Oh, I can see why you're asking this. So you're, looking, you're talking about these two, right? You cannot because these are all additions and subtractions. It has to be multiplication, okay? And uh, a good way to think about this is to ask you, hey, uh, can I just cancel these two A's? And it's never a yes, never. Because the A right here, it's really a common denominator, okay? So, uh, so that's not really a good uh, uh, reason to cancel them out. So, nope, not going to do it. Can't do it. So again, it is tedious, and it will get more tedious when the next topic comes in. When we say, all right, uh, we're gonna apply these product rule and quotient rule in, and when you're applying those, then you have to apply some new other rules. So that's gonna be more challenging.